we had been looking at the calculation of degree of freedom using the degree of freedom cal uh, formula. We have looked for spatial and uh, planar mechanism with various examples. But this degree of freedom calculation formula, this fails under certain situations. So, in today's lecture, we are going to look at these failure cases, so that you know under what conditions this might fail, will not give the correct answer. So, to give you an overview of what we are going to discuss today, we are going to discuss this failure of degree of freedom calculation. We are going to look at special dimensions and geometry, the effect of these special dimensions and geometry on this calculation of degree of freedom. And finally, we'll, we are going to look at a related concept of dead center or singular configuration with certain applications. So, just to give you a review of what we have discussed, this is the calculation of degree of freedom of planar mechanism. Then, this is the calculation of degree of freedom of a spatial mechanism, where we have this 6 in place of 3 in the case of spatial mechan uh, planar mechanisms. And we have seen all these points that mechanism must have at least one degree of freedom, structure has zero degree of freedom and over constraint structure has negative degrees of freedom. We have looked at all these things. Now, we come to the discussion on failure of this degree of freedom calculation that we have just now seen. To start with, let me take this example of the combination of links let me count the number of links so ground is 1 2 this turner is 3 4 5 so this has 5 links the number of joints so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and these are all revolute pairs so summation of degree of freedom is 6 so if i do the degree of freedom calculation which i have done here it turns out to be 0. So, this is a structure, this combination is a structure and it is indeed a structure. But what about this? Here also you will find that this degree of freedom calculation remains the same. So, number of links is 5, number of joint is 6 and summation of degree of freedom is also 6. So, together if you calculate that calculation remains the same, it turns out to be 0. But this mechanism surprisingly or, or, or this combination surprisingly with this very special you can see that this has got very special dimensions. This length is equal to this length, this length is equal to this length is equal to this length. this length is equal to this length. 
So, all of them are parallelograms and when they when I try to move one of the links this always remains a parallelogram. So, the distances between these hinge points they remain fixed. So, I can join them by rigid bodies like the way it has been done. This is known as an extended parallelogram linkage and this can move this has one degree of freedom. But our degree of freedom calculation says that this has 0 degree of freedom because the degree of freedom calculation does not know about the special dimensions I have used. So, the degree of freedom calculation can fail on account of special geometry. So, though the degree of freedom calculation says 0 because of very special dim dimension of the mechanism this has gained a degree of freedom. It has gained a degree of freedom because of very special dimensions. If I were to change, if I were to change suppose this kinematic pair I bring here and join like this and remove this, immediately this becomes a structure immediately this becomes a structure. So, for very special dimensions this is the mechanism. A small deviation this way or that way this makes this a structure. So, when you have to design such things you have to be very careful with the dimensional tolerances. So, if the degree of freedom calculation says that your system has 0 degree of freedom yet it can move or yet you are thinking it will move or you are designing it to move, then you have to be very careful with the design and its manufacturing. So, this is this property of this very special dimensions is non-generic that means any, any small deviation, any small perturbation will make it the generic case of a structure. The structure is a generic case, it is robust. You make small deviations, it will still remain a structure. For very, very special dimensions, this is a mechanism. Any small deviation from that, it is going to become a structure. So, that property of being a mechanism in this particular case is non generic, we will say this as non generic. Generic thing is structure. So, degree of freedom calculation gives you a generic feature of the combination of interconnected links. So, degree of freedom calculation has remained the same as I have said. So, the failure is due to special dimensions as we have discussed. Next is this example of two friction disks. By friction disks, I mean at this point you have very large friction, infinite friction like gears. So, this these may be considered as the pit circles of two gears. Now, I know that this can rot roll, I mean the, the, the gears can rotate. So, these two friction disks should be able to rotate and we know that it will. But let us look at the degree of freedom calculation. So, let me number the ground as 1 this body as 2 and this body as 3. So, number of links is 3, number of joints. So, here I have revolute 2, 2 revolutes and here it is like a lower pair contact, but this has only rolling because of infinite friction. So, because of friction this lower pair has one degree of freedom, this, this is one kinematic pair. So, there are three kinematic pairs and when I come to degree of freedom of 
individual kinematic pair. So, this revolute has 1, this revolute has 1, so 2, 1 plus 1, 2 and this has only 1 degree of freedom because it can only allow rolling, no slipping. So, only rolling. So, summation of degree of freedom of the kinematic pairs is 3. So, degree of freedom calculation says 3 times number of links minus 1 minus 3 times number of joints plus 3. So, that turns out to be 0. So, this the degree of freedom calculation says this is a structure, but we know that this is not a structure, this can rotate. So, I have here once again that degree of freedom calculation and we are finding that this is failing and this failing is because of the special geometry. What is the geometry? These are two circles. Had they not been circles, then this would not have worked then this degree of freedom calculation what it is saying is correct it becomes a structure because that this is these are two circles so very special geometry the degree of freedom calculation is failing but make it's uh, devi if you deviate from even slightly from this circular geometry individually the, uh, in, in, immediately this will become a structure so once again we say that the degree of freedom calculation gives you a generic feature, whereas very special dimensions under which this gains a degree of freedom is a non-generic feature. Any small deviation will take it to the generic feature of a structure. So, very special geometry uh, for this very special geometry, this degree of freedom calculation is failing. Now, this degree of freedom calculation the, the same thing happens for this combination of links. So, suppose ground is 1, 2, 3. So, 3 links, 3 kinematic pairs and they are all hinges. So, summation of degree of freedom is 3. So, 0 degree of freedom is 0 and we know that this is a structure. But if you bring this, suppose you have it combined like this. So, this, this, is, a, this is a different combination there are two links and the hinge in between and they are straight. Now, this corresponds to this case of the two friction disks. The, the, there are two ground hinges and one kinematic pair with one degree of freedom at the contact. So, that is what I have drawn. So, this also actually gains a degree of freedom, but only slightly if you even slightly take it out of this configuration immediately it cannot move but exactly at this configuration there is a possibility of moving which you possibly know by experience also that if you put these two links and if you load it if you give a load this has a tendency of moving but only slightly once it moves a small amount it will not move any further because there it becomes a structure the kinematic pair has gone out of this line this line as long as the kinematic pair is on that line there is a, there is a tendency to move but as soon as it go, goes off from that line it becomes a structure Now, we come to another case as you can see I have made a figure with one L, L shaped link 
one triangular link and a trapezium. So, so you have three links, number of joints, I have a sliding pair here. So, a prismatic pair, a prismatic pair here and a prismatic pair here. So, there are three prismatic pairs and summation of degree of freedom of individual kinematic pairs. So, there are three prismatic pairs each with one degree of freedom. So, I have three. Now, if you do this degree of freedom calculation, it will turn out to be 0. So, let me show you. this configuration. Now, you know if I am to push this triangular link, it is going to come to this configuration and this trapezoidal link, this will move up. So, this indeed has one degree of freedom, but our degree of freedom calculation says this has 0 degree of freedom. So, again our degree of freedom calculation has failed. So, this is our degree of freedom calculation which says 0, but here I have shown you that it can move. So, this failure is due to very special geometry, geometry of this 3 p loop. So, here p p p. So, there is a loop of there is a 3 p loop three prismatic pairs in a loop. The same calculation degree of freedom calculation also holds for the revolute joints. So, if I have just now we discussed degree of freedom calculation does not change, but then this is very special 3 p loops is special. You see, I have replaced individual revolute pairs that you see here by 3 p, p pairs. That is all I have done and immediately it becomes a mechanism, it can move. So, the failure here is because of, we say because of special geometry of 3 p loops. Now, let us look at degree of freedom of a spatial mechanism and see the failure in that case. So, a 4 R spatial mechanism, let me try to draw, let me try to draw a spatial 4 R mechanism. So, roughly
this is how a general 4 r spatial mechanism will look like so these are all revolute pairs let me count the number of links so maybe i can round this so 1 2 3 4 so number of links is 4 number of joints is also 4 and summation of degree of freedom is also 4 because individually they have one degree of freedom revolute pairs so therefore degree of freedom calculation says now this is a special kinematic chain so 6 times number of links minus 1 minus 6 times number of joints plus summation of degree of freedom of each joint. So, this is minus 6 plus 4, this is minus 2. So, this is an over constrained structure, this becomes an over constrained structure. So, it is very difficult to assemble this. If there is dimensional, uh, dimensional tolerance is not proper, then this will be very difficult to assemble or it will assemble with internal stresses. So, this is an over constrained structure that is what our degree of freedom calculation tells us. So, a general 4 r spatial mechanism please note this word spatial. So, this is a spatial mechanism is a is an over constrained structure. Let us look at this. So, this is the degree of freedom calculation again for you, but you know this joint. This is called the universal joint or the Hooke's joint. This is used to connect two intersecting shafts two intersecting shafts. Now, what do we have here? We have bearings here and bearings here. So, therefore, this shaft can rotate, this shaft being connected to there through this joint universal joint will also rotate. So, let me show you what are the kinematic pairs involved. So, this is a revolute pair, here there is a revolute pair. So, R here there is a revolute pair R and here there is a revolute pair. So, R, 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 R. So, this is a 4 R spatial kinematic chain. So, 4 R spatial kinematic chain and we know that this can rotate. So, this has one degree of freedom. So, once again we find that our degree of freedom calculation has failed, but then again remember this is very special geometry and dimension. The 4 R spatial mechanism that I had drawn in the previous slide was a general situation. Now, here you can very well see that these angles and the dimensions they are very special, only then this is a mechanism. So, this is a non generic feature. So, you have to be careful with this universal joint, the dimensional accuracy, the angles. So, under special geometry and special dimensions, this is a mechanism. So, the failure in this case is due to special dimension and geometry.
Now, we come to a somewhat related thing of dead center configuration. Now, what are these dead centers? You must have heard these terms top dead center of an engine of a piston. So, what are these dead center configurations? So, here I have this example of an IC engine by which I motivate this discussion. So, this is the top dead center of this engine, it is called TDC top dead center of this piston. Now, what happens? This is an extreme configuration of the piston. While this crankshaft can still rotate, the crankshaft can still rotate and it can rotate at an arbitrary speed. It can rotate at an arbitrary speed, it at this configuration it might be rotating at an arbitrary speed depending on the speed of the vehicle. But imagine just when it comes down a bit, the piston has come down a bit. Now, the speed of the piston and the crankshaft are related. The only configuration where it breaks down is the top dead center as well as the bottom dead center. There the relation between the rotation speed of the crankshaft and the speed of the piston breaks down, the relation breaks down. So, the, the crankshaft can have an arbitrary speed and the piston stays at rest at the top dead center and the bottom dead center. These are dead center configurations or we also call them as singular configurations. Why do we call them as singular configurations? These are, these are of course, extreme configurations as I have shown. The speed ratio is arbitrary, so output which is the crankshaft speed is arbitrary and there is uncertainty in the motion direction. Now, this uncertainty means there is a gain in degree of freedom. Just now we discussed this 3 R mechanism. We just now discussed this 3 R mechanism, uh, 3 R uh, uh, combination of links. Now, piston is now stationary. So, maybe I can think of like this. So, here this has a tendency to move as you know. Now, as the piston comes down, I can move in this configuration, I can move to this configuration shown in blue or I can move to this configuration as I show in red. So, this is the uncertainty, the crankshaft can either go counterclockwise or can go clockwise. Of course, in an actual engine this is prevented by the flywheel, it has momentum and so the crankshaft moves only in one direction. But otherwise imagine that this is a mechanism, just a mechanism 3 or 1 p mechanism, then there is this uncertainty in motion. Same thing here, suppose I try to move this, I can have two possibilities, this can go slightly like this or it can go slightly to this side as I move the input. So, this was this black configuration was an extreme configuration, this input cannot move in this direction in the in the clockwise direction. 
the input cannot move in the clockwise direction at the extreme configuration. But this can have an arbitrary speed. And again this uncertainty in motion, so we have a gain in degree of freedom. I can choose in which direction this will move, whether it is going to move in the counterclockwise direction or whether it is going to move in the clockwise direction. I have this freedom of choice, so there is a gain of degree, gain of gain in the degree of freedom. Now this is used in certain applications. One application is this landing gear mechanism. If you have been careful in noticing this, this is so ground is the aircraft wing. So this is a ground hinge, this is a ground hinge. We are interested in these two ground hinges and looking at the mechanism that is there. So here I have one link, this is the kinematic pair, this is another kinematic pair. So essentially what I have drawn here, I have repeated here another kinematic diagram in which I have shown. So, here you see this is an extreme configuration for this link. This cannot move in the counterclockwise sense anymore, it can move back, but it cannot move in the counterclockwise direction, it is an extreme configuration. So, we have this in the aircraft landing gear. Another is this crimping tool, once again you see this is a ground, there is this link, there is another link goes to a ground. Again this links 2 and 3, they are straightened out. So, therefore, link 4 is in extreme configuration. Link 4 is in almost an extreme configuration. Now, these are used. Now, why these are used in these situations? why this dead center configuration is used. In order to know this, we have to proceed further in this course and as we proceed, I will clarify how this dead center configuration is used in these two cases, especially in this crimping tool. If you see this crimping tool, it can generate huge amount of force, huge amount of force. It is much more than a plier which uses a simple lever. So, that is the advantage you get at a dead center or singular configuration. So, with that I summarize today's lecture and close.